Uh, hello everyone. Uh, in the past several videos, uh, I was explaining how you could build different microservices and uh, how you could uh, connect them together and uh, run communication and so on. So today, let's uh, see how um, complete use case works, um, and uh, we'll see how the full ML pipeline executes uh, from uh, the, the moment when uh, you, you it gets a request. Uh, through the API and then uh, it uh, goes to the data processing part. After that, it trains the model and uh, we'll have a service which executes uh, prediction, a serving service. So let's see how all these parts work together with uh, running on top of uh, Docker, fast API, uh, Celery and microservice architecture. Let's uh, jump uh, into my screen and as I already explained in the previous videos, uh, all the um, uh, demos that I'm doing are based on our open source uh, product uh, or project called uh, Skipper. And the idea is to uh, build simple and reliable ML workflow, which could be used in your own projects as well. And I have a diagram over here and uh, for you to, to understand it better. Uh, what I'll be showing today. Today I'll show uh, fast API endpoints. Uh, then I'll show uh, how it calls um, and how it sends the request to train the model. Uh, this includes data processing, model training, services, and next we'll see uh, how to execute um, serving prediction part. How to call that service. And yeah, I'll, I'll follow it step by step, so you would be able to execute the same on your environment as well, because all the source code is is there, is available. You would need to if you if you don't have RabbitMQ um, in the repository, you will find a Docker Compose file which you could run and, and uh, bring up the RabbitMQ environment, and after that you could start a service one by one in the same way as I do. Okay, so let's start with the engine. This is the service which, which uh, accepts requests, right? So uh, let's go over here to engine. And then we have uh, listed um, uh, steps how to uh, start uh, this project, how to start it locally. I don't need to install requirements because requirements are already installed on my machine. So I just uh, jump into the uh, instruction where you would see how to start fast API. Okay, then I already prepared um, uh, four terminals. Uh, the first one will run uh, fast API and salary. Second one will run data service. Third one, um, training service. And the last one uh, will be responsible to run uh, prediction. Okay, so we start fast API. Okay, that's error is ex uh, expected because yeah, we are in the wrong directory. Sorry for that. So let's uh, go to engine and let's um, run uh, application from here. Okay, fast API is up and running. The next step, if we go to the instructions, is to start a salary task. Uh, we do it in a second tab in the same terminal. So we start a salary distributed queue, and this queue is responsible to uh, handle in asynchronous way all the requests that are coming from fast API. So uh, it, if there are long running tasks, then it makes sense to use Celery. In this way, you would not block uh, your API endpoint and uh, you would retrieve information about the task when task is complete uh, at a certain point of time later, and then you would return the response. Okay, and so our Endpoint is started. So next, let's start um, data processing service. So let's go to list of services over here and to data service. And this is how we start. Uh, basically, in this in this case, this is how we start the service. Uh, later, in next versions of this project, uh, I'll wrap all the services into the container, and then you would be able to just start up the service by starting a container. For now, we just run directly the source code. Okay, so this is a uh, window for uh, service responsible for data processing. It's up and running. And uh, the good thing that um, training service and um, uh, prediction service, you start exactly in the same way like uh, data processing service. So you don't need, we don't need now to go and check instructions. So I just uh, start 
training service and started and then I start a prediction service which is called a serving service serving uh, prediction uh, serving the model functionality okay so it's now all up and running and at this moment we can start and and test um, endpoint and to see how it uh, works all together uh, to find um, uh, reference for uh, endpoint we go to the engine and here below we have uh, uh, URL which points to local uh, host because now this uh, workflow runs on the local uh, we point over here and we open fast API uh, Swagger um, basically a documentation which helps us to test our endpoint in a simple way there is no need to use any external tool uh, we just um, test it directly in the browser okay so first first of all let's um, uh, let's let's build the model let's train the model and the way how this uh, pipeline works uh, it trains the model and uh, it's using timestamp so uh, when new model is available it will be saved on disk uh, with the current timestamp so the next time when a uh, serving model uh, serving uh, service will be executed it by default it will always use the latest model which is available uh, by uh, taking the latest timestamp so this is how it works by default in, in, in this version at least yeah, in in future we may add functionality where we could uh, have the option to be able to specify which um, model you would use, uh, maybe the previous one. Right now we always use the latest. Okay, so let's go to endpoint which uh, executes a start start workflow task and uh, because this workflow is supposed to be generic, so we don't name um, endpoints to be like train model or serve model. It, Rather, you pass uh, whatever you want to do through the payload. Like, like here, we pass, um, we specify that we want to execute a training task over here, right? And, and there's another endpoint uh, which also have a payload, and over there, we can specify that we would like to use a serving task uh, to execute um, a prediction, for example. And because payload is, we are using the same payload structure for both uh, tasks. And by the way, this one is asynchronous tasks. Start workflow task flow is asynchronous task, which means it will execute and uh, it, it will leave um, logic to run on the server and it will return your task ID. So later you would use this task ID to check if task is still running. And if it's done, then you could get the result. And this portion of data we don't need um, actually for the training part so I can delete it and we specify that this task is training payload we need to specify how much of data we'll use for validation uh, we'll use 20% uh, and description is not being is not used in this example so I just will say that this is sample task okay and let's make maybe this window a bit smaller so we would be able to see the output okay or yeah let's it's fine let's say that we keep it like that and we execute training task we go over here and we see that training is executed, task is complete. So model is, was built uh, because we see uh, on a salary that it returns the message that says task is completed. That's fine. And okay, let's now run prediction. And by the way, let, let's check one thing. So when uh, we submitted task uh, for training, we got back task ID as a result. And it says that it's processing, right? So now we can go to uh, another endpoint where we could check the status of the task so now when model is trained it should say that uh, uh, task is completed as, uh, as 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 expected because otherwise if the training would, would still run in progress then we would still we would get the response uh, uh, that task is, is processing Okay, so now let's go to endpoint where we execute um, uh, synchronous tasks where we don't wait because serving uh, usually is fast and we don't need to create request and uh, then wait until it will be uh, completed like we did for training uh, 
part. So serving executes fast, and for that we use synchronous request. So we've got a payload here, and to save time, I uh, prepared the payload, sample payload. Okay, and then we go and execute. And we get back the response. Uh, our model predicts two variables at, while, at once, price and uh, PT ratio. So for that payload, we got back the response. And let's see, let's see what uh, is visible in the log. You see that serving service was executed. And uh, process request serving. So this means it, uh, it went uh, Correctly, and salary doesn't display any additional task completed because uh, synchronous request doesn't go for salary. It goes from fast API. It goes directly to uh, to RabbitMQ and uh, uh, to the service, and then return uh, result is returned back directly. Okay, and yeah, the cool part about um, RabbitMQ uh, is that I could easily. Uh, ramp up this, the service. For example, uh, I see that there's a high load for training service and maybe I, uh, I want uh, more workers to, to process the load. So I could go here and I could say that uh, I would run another instance of um, uh, serving service. It starts. Okay, it started. And now if I would go back to uh, Swagger uh, over here, I, and if I execute like one request and second and maybe third, if I go back to this window, I see that two more requests were processed by the first worker and one request was processed by the second. So this means uh, the distribution happens automatically and there's now nothing uh, you would need to do. As soon as you create multiple workers, then uh, they would subscribe to RabbitMQ uh, uh, functionality and uh, the queue would automatically distribute the uh, task to either the first, second or first worker. So you get uh, load balancing out of the box. And this happens with serving service and the same thing would work uh, out of the box like with training service and with data service. So you get uh, scalability out of the box. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, uh, this is useful. And I was trying to explain how this whole workflow works uh, from the beginning to the end. And what uh, you could expect in the future where the areas we are working on is one of them is uh, we want to build a reusable library uh, that would simplify in this workflow operation with the RabbitMQ uh, functionality. So stay tuned and uh, see you next time. Bye.